all to all my Canadian friends up there, you keep bringing me back because I love adventure. I love going to places I've never been and places that I've been, like the Arctic Island caribou and the Greenland muskox. I can remember like it was yesterday. That polar bear chasing me across the ice almost had a hold of me, and Bob McGuire filmed it. You guys remember that on VHS. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? Well, this week we're going, part of my obsession quest is to go back for polar bear hunting, back up in the Arctic, more adventure, don't go away. It's an exciting one. Victor Chevrolet, Bass Pro Shops, and Alamosito's Ranch present Bob Folkrod's Hunting Adventures. Seven continents, 80 species, a five-year quest in the making, high adventure, dangerous game, real-world training tips. This is Bob Volgrod's Hunting Adventures. Stan, Gore-Tex wanted some adventure. They wanted to test the sum of their gear. I'm headed to the Arctic. I'll tell you what, Bob, you are the man. <laughs> this is an adventure that is off the charts. People dream their entire life about things that you've already done. Well, they want a test of equipment. This, give it to them. Thank you, partner, for sharing this with us. Bob's adventure starts in the tiny hamlet of Cambridge Bay, the last outpost of human settlement in the Canadian far north. Now deep inside the Arctic Circle, Bob has entered a frozen, surreal landscape. Here the sun can rise in the south, in the north, or not at all. They must traverse across hundreds of miles of ice-blown, barren terrain in search of widely dispersed animals. The only way forward now is on snowmobile, but the Arctic will challenge man and his technology like no place else on Earth. I guess my expectations on a, on a hunting trip like this is uh, the adventure part of it. You know, when you come on a trip, uh, you know, especially to the north, you have to understand that uh, it's long hours. Not everybody works on the uh, United States time. You're working with mechanical pieces of equipment like snowmobiles, or, you know, boats, motors, trucks, or automobiles, or whatever. You can have a tendency to break down. Uh, you know, we hadn't got started very far. You know, the first thing we did, we had to re repair a sled. Hey, Bob, that's a prime example right there. You've got to be ready for anything up in that country. Not only that, your equipment. I may even had to spend the night right there, but it only took us a few hours to get the sled fixed, and we was on our way again. But it's like any hunt. You could get a flat tire, you know, the motor could run out of gas, it could quit running. Go with the flow. Relax. you got a lot more days to make this trip happen and be successful. That's right. you got to keep your head about you because it's life-threatening situations in that country. It is up there. Bob Folkrot's Hunting Adventures is brought to you by these five sponsors. Vortex and Buck Fever Synthetics. For the love of mud, gravel, and trail dust. For the love of farm roads, dirt roads, and no roads. For the love of hunting, fishing, and working the land. For the love of conservation, preservation, and restoration. Introducing Tracker Off-Road Vehicles, designed and built on American soil for kicking up American soil. Tracker Off-Road, built for love of country. When we face adversity, we find a way through it. It's about taking care of each other. 
It's the small parts that make a big difference. At Chevy, we promise to do ours. We're offering current Chevy owners OnStar Crisis Assist services and complimentary Wi-Fi data. To help keep you on the road, the Chevy Certified Service Experts are here and ready to help if you require parts, maintenance, or repairs. You can even schedule your service appointments online. It's just our way of doing our part. Bob sets off in search of muskox. Unlike most animals in the Arctic, the muskox doesn't hibernate or migrate in winter. No other land mammal is so perfectly adapted to this harsh land. Like any uh, muskox hunt you're on, when they see the presence of man, they, they seem to, to herd up to protect their little ones real quick. And like this trip, uh, we, was, we were going after the one particular bull in the, the group, and, and gosh sakes, don't you know they run off, you know? And, and just to watch them run with the snow and the way that the sunlight's shining onto them, and, the, and, and to think that the, <laughs> this animal hasn't changed for 90,000 years, it's just the, the romance of it. I think it's the furthest one on the left, isn't it? Yeah. Is that the right one? The one on the yeah, the one on the left. Oh, gosh sakes, they're walking right in front of me. No, it's going to be too close of an angle there. Let's walk over here, Eddie. Oh, this should give it to me. Right here. This will do it. This will do it right here. Good shot, he's going down. Huh? Yeah. That's a That's nice good. one, Eddie, huh? Yeah. Good deal. Woo! Boy, am I burning up. I am burning up. They ran off a couple times, but yeah, you got I finally got in front of them. I'm gonna take some of this head net off. I know it is. Let's go look at him. Well, I tell you what, what a fantastic animal to be able to survive in this environment. You know, they came over from the Ice Age, Siberia, I believe, came over here in the Arctic. They almost shot them off, you know? Now they brought them back to where we can have a hunting season and you folks can have a harvest. That's amazing. He hasn't changed in 90,000 years. The same old animal. You down, boy? Oh, yeah. Look at that. You know what, Eddie? They tell me that this here is six times warmer than cashmere or lamb's wool. And just a woolly old boy. Nice, nice, nice boss horns. on him. Nice horns. I'll tell you what. This is an adventure hunt. You know, these things aren't as leery and Warriors, elk, and white-tailed deer, but you know I like coming up here and hunting with you folks. I'll tell you what, it's an adventure hunt. Absolutely, I always enjoy it. Hey Bob, right there is an example muskox hunting extreme conditions. Oh, extreme! I can remember the first time I went up on a muskox hunt with a bow and arrow, and I had so much gear on I didn't know whether I was even going to be able to draw the bow or not. You know, and here I am up with Polar Tech underwear, extreme element gear from Bass Pro Shop, 
you know. And two, you got to keep your poundage. You got a sleeping bag. You got to carry all the stuff, and you got to stay within 70 pounds limit. You know, I tell you what. Back in the old days, it would I would have been 140 pounds worth of gear. Absolutely, you'd be in trouble without Gore and Windstopper up there. But hey, right there is a prime example of hunters making the difference and bringing the animal back. Oh, they almost shot them to extinction. They almost cleaned them out. They went for the buffalo first, and when they got all the buffalo done, they went for the muskox. And now we got a hunting season for you and I, so anybody, not only you and me, but if they keep doing things right, our kids can go up and hunt them. Transportation for all of Bob Folkrod's hunting adventures is provided by Victor Chevrolet. Check them out at victorchevrolet.com. As the sum of each generation before it, the next generation Corvette stands alone. As the new standard of precision and performance, of engineering and technology, of everything that makes an icon an icon, and a Corvette a Corvette. Although Bob completed his obsession quest taking over 80 animals with a rifle, his first love has always been bow hunting. He's teamed up with longtime friend and archery coach Mike Price to help make you a better bow shot. As you move your elbow away from that arrow that I'm swishing around there, it'll drop that more in line with, with the arrow shaft so you'll come off cleaner off the bow, which you'll make a better shot. The biggest thing that we see, the biggest fallacy we see is everybody comes in the shop and they say, well, you want to make me a tournament archer. I don't, I'm not a tournament archer. Well, let me tell you, the most critical bow on the planet is a hunting bow. We put a blade on the front of the arrow that wants to steer. It's more important for your bow to be tuned finely and you to be a tuned, finely tuned machine to match your bow. The thing is that you can get away with a whole bunch of things with a tournament bow that you can't with a hunting bow. I can get away with the shaft coming out of the bow, maybe a little bit high, that'll make it a little more forgiving for my tournament archery. And as the shooter, we want you to get out of the way of the bow, because if you get out of the way of the bow, the bow is just a machine. The bow will repeat the shot every single time. Our job as coaches is to get, out, get you out of the way of your bow so the bow can repeat the shot. So it's more important for your bow to be finely tuned and you as an archer to be finely tuned because you'll find that even though you're shooting well now, you could be shooting much better. If your equipment fits you, it's sized to you, and it's finely tuned to you and to your arrow and to your broadhead, you're gonna be way more successful. So don't ever put it off because guys will spend thousands and thousands of dollars on bows and accessories to buy the shot and to buy accuracy, but I promise you, you can spend less money on coaching and good advice and come out with better results. Whether you want to be a better bow hunter or a recreational archer or a tournament shooter, we have the tools to get you there. You know, Bob, this is a personal thing with you, the obsession quest, taking all these animals. I, I want you to tell everybody exactly about this. Oh man, Stan, I'm telling you, I'm so blessed to be able to do it, to have my health to do it, but it's, it's we call it the obsession quest. It's the big six in Africa, all the turkeys, so it's giving me the world slam on turkeys, all the North American animals on the safari club list, I think there's 54 of those, and we're gonna do a TV show on every one of them. We're going to break it down to a DVD. We're going to do a book for them. And the real neat thing is, is Bass Pro is going to life-size everyone and put it at the Harrisburg store so the whole world can see them. If anybody in this world can do it, you're the man for it. Hey, I appreciate it, Stan. But hey, let's go over into this Arctic caribou hunt. Can't wait to see it. Set in the back of that sled, you can let the sled beat you up where you're thinking, oh, this is miserable, or you can just kind of relax and go with the flow and let it bounce you around and just, you know, think about, gosh sakes, I'm in the Arctic. Look at this. 
how did people survive and, and, and just just suck it in. It, it fascinated me to come up here and see these uh, these caribou. You know, they're kind of going along the ocean, and the ocean was right there next to us, and and they're just waiting for the freeze up. They're just waiting so they can cross this uh, barren ground and get into their wintering ground where there's more food. And you know, and just before springtime, they come back into Cambridge Bay again, and they have their calves. And history is one more time repeats itself. Get them shooting sticks too. Right here. It was kind of in a in a in a storm all day long, and, and right there toward the last, the the sun decided to shine, and, and it was just fascinating. It was just absolutely a gorgeous sunset and I took advantage of that. We seen a real respectable Arctic caribou and, and we went for him. It'll work, won't it? Yeah. All right. Get up on top just a little bit. Got this other group coming in back too. We should be able to get in front of them maybe. Yeah. All right. Luckily uh, we had walked quite a ways on to him and and they were in the rut, and for some reason, he, he looked back on him and seen another small bull coming in, and gosh sakes, then he turned around and, and come right back to, to chase him off. And, and it kind of, you know, give us the opportunity to get to the distance that we needed to be able to take him. This is one we want right here, ain't it, Nitty? Looks like he's coming back, doesn't it? He, he's chasing that other bull away. Let me get my other glove on. The wind stopper keep it off my hands anyway. Yeah, that's the one right there. Yeah, he doesn't want that other he doesn't want that other one around. It's a pretty thing, ain't he, Eddie? Gosh sakes, he got nice tops on him. There here it goes, Ed. Eddie, huh? Oh, man, he went down. He didn't go far, did he? A shot like that. That's a good deal. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that's a nice animal right there. Whew. Let me pull this off here a little bit. Getting worked up. Arctic caribou up here in Cambridge Bay. Fantastic animal. They're waiting for the ocean to freeze up so they can go over to their winter ground. Then they come back over just before spring up here on the on the island and have their calves and wait for it to start all over again. I've taken a lot of caribou, but this is my first Arctic caribou, and that's a beauty too. Absolutely gorgeous. This segment has been brought to you by the Victor Chevrolet Deal of the Week. Check them out at VictorChevrolet.com. You ever had a goal? Of course you had. When you was young, it was easy. Save up for that new bike, go on that first camping trip. Then as you got older, there was a car, going off to college, then a home, then sending your kids off to college. What if I only give you five years to live? What would you do with that? 
In my case, I had just lost my father, my greatest fan. I didn't have anybody to come back and tell stories to. My father had never been to those places. I'm sitting in there in my home living room looking at a Safari Club magazine. I had 55 animals in North America on that list. I said, that'd be a good goal to do. They break things down like the white-tailed deer more, and, and they break things like the musk ox. There's two musk ox at Greenland and the Barren Ground. There's more bears. So right now there's 55 animals on that quest from the Safari Club. I says, I might as well add to it and throw the big six in Africa. And the world slam of turkeys. Then I got going to Russia for Marco Polos and Ibexes and New Zealands and Australias, places I never thought I'd be. And even if it didn't happen, I can tell you one thing, I have seen some of the most prettiest places in the whole world, but it did happen. 275 to 300 days a year, I spent on the road trying to accomplish 80 some animals. I've taken something like crocodiles, and it started out to be not only an alligator, but a crocodile. Then it went from there to when I killed the Cape Buffalo. Somebody said, what's the difference between a Cape Buffalo and an Australian Buffalo? So I went to Australia and I shot that Buffalo to South America and took that. So all of a sudden I had three Buffaloes now. It had on the magazine, it said bison, but it didn't say whether it was wood bison or American bison. So I wound up taking both of those. Wolverine, I'm saying, how in the world am I ever going to get a Wolverine on TV, on video? I wound up getting 30 minutes of a Wolverine on TV before we actually shot him. Going over Rocky McBride and tagging a Jaguar and seeing the other side of the world. Well, I want to tell you folks, what if I give you five years? Five years to live. Where do you see yourself? A lot of people dream, but you've got a chance right now right today to make those dreams happen. So when you watch this, dream along with me, pick out your own five-year goal and go on them. It's been exciting. They said it couldn't be done, but it was. All those animals will be, all those 80 animals will be a collection at Bass Pro Shop down in the Pittsburgh store where you can walk through and dream and plan your hunts. I'm Bob Folkrod. And that was my obsession quest. As is often the case when hunting polar bears, the hunter becomes the hunted. Polar bears are very curious by nature and are known to travel thousands of miles each year in search of food. It's quite common for them to come right up into camp to investigate. According to World Conservation Group's estimate, there are between 20 and 25,000 polar bears in the world currently. By 
By international agreement, only indigenous peoples may hunt the world's remaining polar bears, except in Canada. They determine this is a trophy bear, and Bob should take advantage of this prime opportunity. Polar bears are attractive and appealing, but they're powerful predators that do not typically fear humans, which can make them very dangerous. Near human settlements, they often acquire a taste for garbage, bringing bears and humans in perilous proximity. The most important habitats for polar bears are the edges of pack ice, where currents and wind interact. It creates a matrix of ice patches and open water where bears can find the greatest number of seals. Sure. Good deal. <laughs> I think the dogs are tired. I'm tired. I didn't think they'd ever stop. We finally got him up. He laid down to cool off. Boy, we were right on top of him. The old 375 put the put the hurt to him. A nice bear. Now, I tell you what, it's reassuring to know that you can still hunt these polar bears up here in the Arctic. They're doing a fantastic job keeping the numbers right. We can now get export permits to bring them back in the States. And it's just fantastic. We had him in a couple times, but we finally had to wear him down. But here he is, a nice polar bear up in the Arctic. And a great hunt. Fantastic, eh? To me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great hunt. It's reassuring to know that through conservation efforts of man, you can still come up here in the Arctic and hunt polar bear. Here's, here's proof of it right here. And guess what? If we keep doing a job like that as sportsmen, your children will be able to come up here and hunt polar bear too. It's been a great day, and we got a lot of pictures to take. After your successful hunt of a lifetime, contact Wes Good at KanadiStudio.com for the finest taxidermy in the business. For advertising opportunities with Bob Folkrod's hunting adventures, please contact Bob at bgfolkrod at gmail.com.